Texas Rangers. You won't be talking to anybody. What about that masked man and engine? They can cause us plenty of trouble. Well, we got what we were after. No matter who that masked man is, he'd never be able to figure out what that was. Come on. We could do nothing, Kimosabe. Well, Mission Sandori isn't far from here. Maybe the Padre can identify him. Uh, me get horses. 
What is it, big fellow? Hey, Max Strange came us at me. Well, he's trying to tell us something. What's the trouble, Silver? Tato, something's wrong. A baby. <laughs> it must have been put in rocks before Al's laws attacked. Well, Silver found the baby, and it looks as if he plans on taking good care of him. Don't worry, big fellow. We'll be careful with your new little friend. <laughs> My son. Hello, Padre. We didn't mean to frighten your people. Yes, yes, I know my friend, but... Uh... Do you know that man? Padre, this Kumani from the village. He was attacked by a group of hooded outlaws. And the little one, is he all right? Yes. He was safely hidden in the rocks. Oh, calm, calm, Padre. You mustn't be frightened. These men are my friends. But the mask, Padre. He doesn't hide behind it for evil purposes, like those who call themselves the Hooded Raiders. Take your money. It is hard for them to understand. And their fears have grown worse since this all started. Have outlaws killed others? A wave of robbery and murder has been going on for over three months. They look to me for an answer. I don't know what to say to them. And now, this little child of Kumani's, the mother is already gone, so tiny to be without a home and loved ones. Oh, no, Padre. He will have a home here. And, and I will love him. Oh. Papiva will take care of you, little one. Padre, do you not think it wise to send for the doctor? I would rest much easier if I knew the baby was unharmed. Me get doctor. Where I find him? In his office in Sandoria. Dr. James Rolfe. with the masked man. Yeah, and he's looking for the dog. What are you doing in here, Injun? Me look for Dr. O. Man, tell me he is here. Didn't the man tell you I don't allow no redskins in here? Me leave after me find doctor. Doctor's upstairs in the lockup, tending one of my prisoners. Now, if you got any business with him, get on outside and wait for him. Me fine, doctor. I said outside, Injun. Maybe you're hard of hearing, Injun. Maybe you don't know it's the sheriff talking to him. Take it easy on the woodwork, boys. 
It costs a lot of money to keep this place solid. Let that man alone. Better keep out of it, Doc. That's enough. Well, Doc, what's the matter? You getting queasy or something? Yeah, kind of out of your line, ain't it, Doc? How come you're taking the side of an engine? I've got enough work to do without patching up after your saloon, girls. I told him we didn't allow no redskins in here. That doesn't give you the right to stand by and see a man almost killed. It's supposed to be your job to keep the peace. You Dr. James Rolfe? That's right. Padre sent me from mission. Is the Padre ill? No, but him wants you come. Certainly. <laughs> Another one of them charity patients, huh, Doc? Oh, now don't get sore, Doc. You know how it is. I gotta see to it the place is run right. Sound as a dollar. He's a fine boy, Felita. I hope you can get the men who killed his father. It's too bad the law can't help you. But I'm afraid Tonto found out rather painfully what kind of a man our sheriff is. Uh, bruises on body go away, but the sheriff and um, sickness can't be fixed with medicine. Well, Padre, we'll be heading for our campsite. By the way, the first Indian who was killed, were there any surviving relatives? Yes, his widow. Her name is Kalama. She's working for Francis Henderson. Thank you. Well. Speak and you shall see. Is Francis Henderson. Do you wish to see her? No, Padre. Tano and I will leave for the back entrance. The fewer people to know of our presence here, the easier our work will be. Come in, my dear. You're a welcome sight to the tired eyes of an old man. Oh, a man's never old when he can make a woman's heart flutter with such charming words, Padre. I bet you were a devil 20 years ago. Oh, hardly a devil. <laughs> I saw horses outside. I'm not intruding on something, am I? No, Francis. The horses belong to some friends of mine. Oh, what a precious child. The baby's father was attacked and killed by the hooded raiders. How terrible. Why did they kill him? Same as before, no apparent reason. Oh, this is terrible. What kind of men do we have in this town? As of right now, I'm doubling my reward for the capture of the raiders. What about the wire I sent to the federal marshal's office? Have you received any word? Not a word, Padre. I doubt if anyone even knows this town exists anymore, including the federal marshal's office. I sometimes wonder why I stay here. If it weren't for men like you and the doctor, I would have left a long time ago. Tell me, Dr. Rolfe, what keeps you in San Dorio? It's my home. But a handsome, intelligent young man like you, why, well, you could make twice as much money in some other town. It's his job to heal the sick of body, my dear, just as it is my job to heal the souls. If money were the important thing, I'm afraid San Dorio would lose both of us. I just wish I weren't so disgustingly healthy, Doctor. Believe me, I'd welcome a chance to become your patient. Padre, I've got to get back now. But please, if there's anything I can do, just let me know. And try not to be so serious, Doctor. You're so much more handsome when you smile. Why do you make it so difficult? There's nothing to discuss, Padilla. I told you that. How can you stand it? How can you just stand by? Because I've learned to live with it. I've learned to resign myself to what I'm doing. I'm sorry there's nothing I can do. What is it? What is wrong?
you have killed our friend Kumani. For that, you will die. You're wrong. We tried to save his life, but we were too late. That's right. We take his boy child to mission where him be safe. One hand not clean the other. Padre will tell you we speak the truth. We come as friends. Friend? Friend not fear to have face be seen. I only wear this mask as a symbol of justice. Does this mean anything to you? A silver bullet. And a great silver stallion. Uwaka. When I first saw the mask, I thought... Thought I was one of the hooded raiders? Yes. I am called Redbird. I understand the men of your tribe have accepted the laws of the land. Why are you now taking the law into your own hands? Two of my people have been killed. The law seems not to be written for us. The law was written for all men. Kimasabi, look. It is the beginning of ceremony of Lake of Fire. Torch will burn till five suns have crossed the sky. Padre spoke to me at a festival your people planned. You have heard the legend? Yes. Tano told me the story, but it was many years ago. It is told here on stone by my ancestors. It was many, many years ago when the shiny-headed Spanish warriors came up from the sea. They plundered the villages of my ancestors. Many were killed. Spanish soldiers hunt the seven cities of gold. They care not who dies. The Indians fought but with arrow against gun and armor. It is here where this lake now ripples in the moonlight that the legend of the Lake of Fire began. The Spanish warriors had made campsite here, put guards out. The Spanish know that my people were to attack at dawn and know they fight to death. But Spanish not worry. They know that only miracle can save Indians from slaughter. But then miracle happened. A great ball of fire came out of the heavens. Ball of fire fell straight at Spanish camp. The Spanish were destroyed and my ancestors were saved. The great hole made by fire from heaven soon filled with water and lake of fire was born. It stays to give my people truth of the great power above. That is why we have ceremony. Crater Lake. The ball of fire, of course, was a meteorite. That is what white man believes. But to the Indian, it was dropped by the hand of someone above. We must return to our village. I will tell our chief that you are here. His heart is heavy with sorrow now because of the death of Kumani. Redbird, you will keep your promise to the Padre. Redbird cannot say what will happen when next the sun rises. Only that he will fight for his people. Two medallions, and, and I need all five. You'd need a thousand, Fran. I'd get them for you. I know you would, Ross. Please, Ross, not now. We'll have plenty of time together after this is all over. Well, that city of gold's been there a long time. It's not going anywhere. I know that. Well, don't get sore, Fran. What's the matter? Getting scared? Maybe. I don't like having that masked man after us. Particularly after what happened today. Oh, what could he find out? Maybe it's hard for you to understand, Ross, but... Well, this is something that I've thought about for over five years. Ever since my late husband and I found out for sure that the City of Gold existed. We collected and read hundreds of books. Deciphered thousands of documents. And then we found it. In the journal of one of Coronado's lieutenants. 
one of the seven legendary cities of Sibylla was a reality. It's right here, Ross, near Sandoria. Five medallions are a key to fabulous wealth. We must locate the others. Don't worry about it. We will. See, the boys are getting kind of anxious about another payday. They're a little tired of collecting Indian trinkets. They think I'm a, I'm a little local. You haven't told them anything, have you? Of course not. But like I say, they're running short of whiskey money. You think you can get them together by tomorrow afternoon? Yeah, sure. What do you got in mind? Well, there's a payroll going out to the Dallas mine. Dallas, that belongs to you. That's right, it does. Don't you think it's about time I was a victim of the Hooded Raiders? Oh, Fran, you're great. <laughs> so are you. I know, but convince me. Understand it. They kill a poor Indian for no apparent reason. And then they rob Francis Henderson of a payroll. You think maybe them try to throw suspicion away from Indian killing? I don't know. I wonder. The legend of the Lake of Fire. Could it have any connection with these mysterious killings? service, sir. Seemed that you failed to provide your steed with a horse blanket. Ah, scout him plenty funny. Get up, scout. Go on. Go on. Why are you wearing a disguise? Well, it just seemed to me that a nice southern gentleman like myself could get more answers in Sandoria than that masked man you ride with. That right, but who you talk to? The town of my first stop will be the Indian woman whose husband was killed two weeks ago. Maybe she can help us. Ride Silver? Oh, it might be that some of the hooded raiders are in Sandoria. I'll get a horse from the Padre. When you leave? Well, as my daddy, Colonel Beauregard Regan, was fond of saying, there's no time like the present. No, sir. <laughs> You'd better stay here. I'll contact you shortly. Mr. Regan. Kalama will be out shortly. I hope you won't upset her. She's very old, and her husband's death was quite a shock to her. Well, I'll try not to, ma'am. You like my painting? Well, I never did care much for Velazquez. A candle was more to my liking. Why, you surprise me, Mr. Reagan. You don't look to be an art lover. Well, you can never judge a book by its cover. Like this ranch here, yours. 
I never expected to find all this inside. My late husband was quite a collector of early Spanish art, and fortunately, I've had the money to keep up the same interest myself. Sit down. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Tell me, Mr. Reagan, why exactly did you come here? Well, to speak to the Indian woman. Well, I know that, but why? It could be that thousand dollars you're offering for information about the hooded raiders. Oh, are you a lawman? Uh, no, ma'am. Not exactly. Well, then it's the money that you're after. Well, that's right. I understand one of your wagons was robbed yesterday. Does that up the reward? Possibly. What is it, then? Are you a bounty hunter? At your service. To the highest bidder. I admire your frankness, Mr. Reagan. But isn't it a rather dangerous occupation? Well, hone a field can be dangerous if you whack your foot. <laughs> Mr. Reagan, you're priceless. Well, not quite, ma'am, but I do have my price. Depends on the circumstances as to how much it is. Oh, Kalama, come in. Mr. Reagan would like to ask you a few questions about your husband. Him die. Do you have any idea why I was killed? Why moon rise? Why cloud cover sun when rain is come? Kolama know not why her man is die. Or was he robbed? Was he carrying anything of value? Like money, gold? Husband not have gold. Evil men steal coins, bracelets. Neck piece him get from Chief Tomachi. Not worth money. Then there's nothing else Please, she can... Please, Mr. Reagan, there's nothing more she can tell you. That's all, Kalama. You may go. I'm afraid you've picked out a rather difficult job this time, Mr. Reagan. And you've got some competition. A man? A masked man who rides a white horse. He's also on the trail of the hooded raider. Yes, I believe I heard something about that myself. However, it doesn't bother me too much. See if the masked man gets there first. Well, I'll just have to find another way to get some money. Ross, you might extend us the courtesy of knocking. This is not the town saloon. I want to know what he's doing here. Mr. Reagan is here on business. He's a bounty hunter. He's uh, interested in collecting the reward for the hooded raiders. I don't like strangers coming around here. Get out, mister. Well, I'm here visiting Mrs. Henderson, sir. I'll leave when she tells me. Tell him to leave, friend. Now! I'm sorry, Mr. Reagan. Perhaps it would be better if you left. Yes, ma'am. If you say so. We'd probably make quite a mess of her living room. Right, good afternoon, Mrs. Henderson. more, do you understand? You're my woman, and it's gonna stay that way. And don't you ever forget it. My son, I didn't mean to intrude. I was just about to leave, Padre. You're not very good at keeping secrets, James. Your troubled heart is very apparent. It's something I have to work out for myself. I'm not a mind reader, James. I'm only guessing. But if I'm right, Aviva's in the mission garden. It's nothing like a mother's love, I guess. Oh, James. Baviva, don't. Please try to understand, Baviva. 
I've tried to find the right answer. The right words to make you realize how I feel. Nothing comes out the way I want to say it. But why, James, why? Can you not be proud instead of ashamed that you were born an Indian? I'm not ashamed. I'm doing this for my people, for our people. Only in this way can I make enough money to give them free treatment. Surely there must be some other way. No, there's not. I saw the suffering my mother went through because she was an Indian. Do you know what that meant to me? I only know that you live a lie. But with reason. This way, my plans for Mission Hospital may someday become a reality. If I admitted the truth, the people of Sandoria would not accept me. But to do this, you must deny your love for me. You must deny how we feel about each other. Viva, I love you. Nothing will change that. But it means nothing, James. Love is something one must share. You ask me to understand. But how can I forget my love for you? How can I renounce what is in my heart? I can't answer those questions. I only know that, that you and I are not important. We're only two people. My work involves the lives and dreams of many. I hoped and prayed so that our baby... It's not our baby. It's not even your baby. I know, James. But the little one is so helpless. He needs the love of a mother and a father. I thought that... No, Praviva. But you are a fine doctor, James. The people could not deny that, even if they knew. Wouldn't work, believe me. You must try and understand. You must forget me. Forget all that is in the past. You are a coward. I cannot stand by and watch any longer while you listen to insults against our people. Do not worry, James Rolfe. I will not speak your secret. But I think that you will be a lonely man. You will always know in your heart the truth. You were born a red man, and you will die that way. been them hooded raiders again. Lord knows why they won't kill old Charlie. A couple of you boys get him over the corners. I'll be right over. out of that. Mystery is, what were they after? Maybe nothing. Remember when we found Q Manny? His shirt was torn open at the neck. Uh, that right. The old Indian lady told me that her husband wore a trinket around his neck. You know, this could all tie up. You mean maybe hooded men after what Indian wear around neck? It looks that way. 
The old woman told me the trinket was given to her husband by Tomachi, chief of the tribe. Tano, maybe Tomachi can help us. A day's ride back to Indian Village, Kimitami. We'd better hurry. Another life may be in danger. we've been waiting for. Hmm? Welcome to our village. Thank you, Redbird. I'd like to speak to Chief Tomachi. He lies outside Consul Hut. Greetings, Chief Tomachi. We come as friends to speak with you. Oh. You, man who rides Silver Stallion? Uh, are you Tanzo? Uh, Redbird tell me you come help us. Yes, now we want you to help us. Tomachi can do nothing. Much evil come to my people. Evil, perhaps, Tomachi is doing. Three die. Who know how many more? You know why they am killed? Too much, you only know. It's him who put curse on people. Peace, silver, touched by hand of evil spirits. Silver? What do you mean? Oh, it's many years ago, when Tomanchi, young chief, find silver in canyon, cut pieces, give eh, friends. How many, Tomachi? Uh, five. All men who die have one. And these killings do tie up. Tomachi, you must tell us who else has those medallions. There are two left. One belong to Marchi, daughter, her married soldier. Leave village, not see her again. But the medallion, would she have given it to anyone? Daughter, her boy, child. But Tomachi does not know where he is. Never see him. Will not see boy child. So much she die soon. You've no idea where this grandson is located. No way to tell us how we can reach him. Do not know. Dead maybe. Who have other medallions? One belonged to Tomachi's brother. Him died many years ago. He give silver to boy. And this boy. Do you know where he is? He work on the ranch. Uh, uh, Three, maybe four days right. Uh, he come to village for it. ceremony. Him here now? No, no. Man from Sandoria bring paper to Tomachi this morning. Uh, paper come, magic wire. What does it say? Uh, Tomachi no read. Redbird read for him. Mask man look at signs on paper. He's doing Sandori on the stage in less than an hour. There still may be time. Tomachi, we thank you for your help. If we're not too late, this is one death we may prevent. Go ahead.
Jack, get down. Hurry up. Him to the mission. Have the Padre go with you to Sandori to lock him up. Only jail is room over a saloon, Kimisabi. I know, but we have no choice. Our one chance now is to get him to talk. Save your breath, mister. Silver! Where you go, Kimisabi? Back to that stage. The young Indian might be able to give us some information. is going on here. What do you engines want? We come for prisoner. Give keys. Now look here, engine. You can't order me around. I'm the sheriff here. That prisoner is my responsibility. I just won't allow it. Bad man stop us? I'll lock you all up. No bunch of redskins is going to come busting into my place and tell me what to do. Put that prisoner back in his cell. What kind of law is this anyway? Indian law. Padre, what is it? Redbird, the Indians from the village. They've taken the prisoner from Sandoria. 
taken him. Well, do you know where? To their village. I don't know what they will do with him. Indian justice is swift. Let's hope it's not too swift. That prisoner is our only lead to the rest of the hooded raiders. Come on, Tallow. No! No! No, please! White man, tell us who else killed my people. No! No, don't! Who you work for? I can't. I, I can't. They'll kill me. No! no. see him good enough. You think he'll talk? Wouldn't you? Grab those horses. White men, tell truth. Who are the hooded raiders? Why you kill Indian? Oh, please! Please don't! Stop! I'll talk. You've broken your promise to us. No, my friend. This man was our only clue to the others. Now you have killed him. No. Indian did not kill. Bullet fired from over there. Indian only tried to frighten outlaw. We have many ways to loosen tongue of silent man. But now he's dead. White man die, but tell me name of man he worked for. Say Brady. Brady? Brady is man who lead hooded raiders. Red bird speak tooth, Kimisabi. Me find rifle shell and tracks of two horses. What else did he say? Say outlaw steal medallions. Not know why. Only Brady know why. There are only one left, Kimisabi. Maybe outlaws already have it. Maybe Brett Reagan can find out a little more about this. I have a good description of those medallions, and Brady might be convinced that Reagan has the last one. That dangerous, Kimisabi. Maybe Brady already know where medallion is. That's one chance I'll have to take. Anderson. Sorry to bother you like this, but I'd like to speak to your gentleman friend, Mr. Brady. What makes you think he's here? Well, his horse is outside for one thing, and you for the other. Come in, won't you? Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Brady. Please don't get up, sir. I'll sit down. You don't give up, do you, Bounty Hunter? Or maybe I didn't make myself clear enough the last time you were here. Well, I'm not here to see the lady this time, sir. It's you I wish to speak to. Yeah, why? Uh, well, business, Mr. Brady. I'm not interested. Or maybe you'd be interested if I told you I knew the identity of the leader of the Hooded Raiders. Now, why tell me? Tell the sheriff. He's the law around here. Well, I kind of figured you'd like to hear about it first, sir. You see, I'm interested in money. Information like this is only worth a thousand dollars, thanks to Mrs. Henderson's reward. I figured you'd like to offer twice that much. Trying to blackmail me? Sir, a southern gentleman never stoops to such tricks as blackmail. I like to call it shrewd business dealings. I wouldn't do anything like that, Mr. Brady. I also happen to be in possession of some other information the whereabouts of a certain medallion. Now, if you were to shoot me, I wouldn't be able to tell you anymore, would I? I don't follow you, Reagan. 
Why should I be interested in any medallion? Because it's written all over your face. Now, sit down, Mr. Brady. No sense in getting all excited about this. Now, suppose you tell me who your employee is. Employer? That's right. It's quite obvious that you aren't equipped with the intelligence to be behind an operation like this. I'd rather do business with the person you take your orders from. Mister, I'm gonna take you apart. Please, don't let me handle this. Why don't you ride on back to town? Look, Fran, it's hey, got... Please, I'll talk to him alone. Please. Hmm? Please, Ross. All right. Look, you'll be careful, you hear? Yes. Yes, now go on and, and I'll talk to you later. You seem rather suspicious, Mr. Reagan. Oh, I found it, Pace. Yes, it does. Would you like a drink? Uh, no, thank you. Never mix business with pleasure, as they say. Well, then, let's get along with the business, shall we? Now, tell me, what is this about a medallion? Well, I'm not rightly sure you'd be interested, ma'am. People have been killed for having one. Well, I've posted a reward for the killers. Possibly this is the answer to the mystery. No, I don't think so. That reward of yours is mighty nice. But this is something worth a lot more. I don't understand. Ten thousand dollars. Ten? For a medallion, a trinket? Well, like I said, ma'am, people have been killed for having one. I imagine those people would have thought ten thousand mighty cheap for their lives. You interested? I know, it's just that, well, this whole thing puzzles me. It puzzled me lots more until I got my hands on the medallion. You have it? Yes, ma'am. And now I aim to sell it. Well, perhaps I would be interested. Uh, that is, you see, I collect valuable relics, and if this medallion is worth what you say it is... Uh... Ma'am, I think you're trying to play games with me. I believe you know why it's worth so much. Now, can we do business? Well, I'd have to see the medallion first. Well, I'd sure be a fool to carry anything like that with me. No, I've got it safely hidden in a good spot. Two days' ride from Sandoria. <laughs> well, and I'm sorry, Mr. Reagan. Thinking it over, ten thousand is an awful lot of money for something I haven't even seen. I don't think I'm interested. Well, that's perfectly all right, Mrs. Henderson. I can afford to wait until the right buyer comes along. Nice to have seen you again. Wait. Yes? Please, Mr. Reagan, sit down. I think you and I have a lot to talk about. Yes, ma'am. I believe we do. So you see, this proves that the legendary gold city of Sibylla existed. The leader of the Spanish exploring party that was destroyed by the meteorite found it and inscribed the location on a silver plaque. Then he dispatched an Indian slave to take the plaque to Coronado. The slave was attacked and wounded and lost the plaque along the trail. He died only telling that the plaque existed. Well, that's amazing, ma'am. And these medallions are cut from the plaque. That's right. And with yours, I'll have the location to the gold city. It seems that's going to be worth more than 10,000, isn't it? I believe I quoted a low price. You won't have to worry about money after this, Mr. Reagan. I like you. I like the way you think and the way you act. You and I can become permanent partners. That's why I've told you all this. Oh, what about Brady? He's a vicious, disgusting person. And his only use to me has been to carry out the necessary arrangements in obtaining the medallion. I think you'll find a way to dispose of him. Dispose of him, ma'am? I think you understand. Yes, I expect I do. Then it's settled? Just a couple of more details, Mrs. Henderson. Francis. Uh, Francis, I'd like to advise you my thinking along a few lines. Please do. Well, it's plain with you owning the telegraph company. Not much can come and go without you knowing about it. That's true. On top of that, you're a respected citizen here in the community. <laughs> Actually, you got Sandoria right in the palm of your pretty little hand. 
What are you trying to say, Mr. Reagan? That I wouldn't stand much of a chance if you decided to have me killed. Everyone would believe whatever you told them. That's why I've got the medallion safely hidden in a good spot. <laughs> you're not only handsome, you're clever. And fond of living, ma'am. Then you think I'll double-cross you? Well, not exactly. But I'd venture to say that Ross Brady didn't think so either. One thing you'll have to remember. I'm not Ross Brady. I know. There's no doubt about it. Brady and the Henderson woman are behind these killings. Why we not take them to law? We could, but I want all the hooded raiders. Uh, there are plenty of guns for us to fight, Kimasabi. I know. I'm going to ride to Denton. Telegraph for help from the marshal's office. A message not get through if sent from Sandoria. Not with Francis Henderson controlling the wires. Even the Padre's messages for help weren't sent. You not be back from Denton until late tomorrow. You want me to wait here for you? No, I'll meet you at the mission, say, about 3 o'clock. In the meantime, Tony, you'd better ride into town. Keep your eye on Brady and the Henderson woman. If they make a move, follow them. See you next Thursday, Mr. Carlin, if it's all right with you. It certainly is. Good day. Look, Viva. Padre? How's the child? Well enough, apparently. But we thought there'd be no harm in having you look him over. He's leaving the mission, you know. No. No, I didn't know. Padre has found him a home where he will have both mother and father. For Viva, I... Shall we go in, doctor? Or do you treat your Indian patients in the street? Patients are starting in mighty early, ain't they? Your attempt at humor is uncalled for, Mr. Madison. No offense, Med Padre. You know how I feel about the doc? Why, he saved my missus' life last fall. I'll never forget that. No, sir. It's just I don't see why he wastes so much time on them redskins, that's all. Is it a waste of time to save a human life if the skin is red? Well, now, you said it. I didn't. Or does the skin have to be like yours? Savita, you'd better make her shut up, Padre. I'm liable to go forgetting she's female. Oscar, please. Oscar, please. Why do you not get down on your knees and beg the fat one? Why, look, you... You not touch her. Why? You have the tongue and the courage of the coyote. You speak much, but you say nothing. Skin talk like that. What would you do if I said the same thing, Oscar? Well, that's different. Is it? Would it be so different? Why? Because you think I'm like you? Why, why sure, Doc. I... Well, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you all something. I'm an Indian. The blood of Tomachi, chief of the tribe, runs through my veins. 
I'm his grandson. All these years I've masqueraded because I thought it was important. I thought it would make a difference. But after what I've just witnessed, I know now I was wrong. But Viva tried to make me understand. I wouldn't listen. Now, be before all of you, I'd like to beg your forgiveness. I'll no longer have to hide this from the sight of anyone. It's been the only thing I've kept to remind me of my heritage. Now I will continue to wear it proudly. Oh, Doctor. Quickly, let's get him inside. Reagan's a phony. The doctor has the medallion. Dr. Rolfe? Yes, he's an Indian. He just admitted it in front of the whole town. Come on. Sure was a surprise, huh, folks? <laughs> Imagine the doc being a redskin. Well, it's no sense in standing out here in the street. Uh, how about some drinks? On me. How about it, Fred? Bill? It, it ain't often old Oscar will spring for free drinks. You'll be all right with a little rest. Padre, could you stay with him? Well, certainly, James, but where are you going? My people are meeting this afternoon at the Lake of Fire for the ceremony. I want to take Baviva and the child with me. I want to see my grandfather. Speak to him before he hears from the others. Surely, my son, I understand. And I'll remain with Tonto until you return. Perhaps Tomachi will forgive me too, Baviva, as you have. I am sure he will, James. And maybe Pavio will not have to give up the child, Padre. I think I know of a couple who want him very, very much. Of course, there are a few legal technicalities. The marriage ceremony is my favorite service. With all modesty, I might admit that I do an admirable job of it. Doctor. It is I, Tonto. Padre Esteban. Now, you're weak, my friend. You mustn't try to talk. Where, Doctor? He and the baby and Paviva have driven towards the lake to see their people. No, 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 you mustn't try to get up. Doctor in great danger. Who did Raiders try to kill him? Try to kill the doctor? But why? No time to talk, Padre. Must find Doctor. But you can't ride. You're in great pain. Pain better than to have Doctor be killed. Padre, you have horse and buggy? Yes, but... Uh... You ride on road toward Denton. Masked man on way from Junction. You tell him Doctor wears last medallion. Tell him Tonto ride toward Lake. Last medallion? I don't understand. No, try to understand, Padre. Just do.
Doctor, you take my horse. Go to Lake right fast. You ain't much danger. But, Tom, No time to talk. Me take my weaver and baby to village. Who did outlaws try to kill you? To kill me? But why? For the medallion you wear. Them kill you to get it. Look! Village not far. We reach there and get help. Ha! Yeah! I don't quite know. Tonto told me to tell you that the doctor has the last medallion. He's ridden to the lake to intercept the doctor in Paviva. Doctor has it? Yes. Dr. Rolf is the grandson of Tamachi. Tonto said you would understand the danger. Yes, Padre. I do. There is no one here to help. All have gone to Lake of Fire for celebration. We can't risk a run for it out in the open. Doctor, take Paviva and Baby in there. Go, Scout! Go! Go! Me try to make outlaw think you had other place in village. Uh, no, Doctor, not worry about me. Go inside, hurry! Ha! place apart till we find him. He didn't make it. They're closing in on him. Oh, if I only had a gun.
I can't see a thing. The medallion, Doc. Make it fast. Come on! Kid goes with me. To make sure I get out of here. No, no, please. Give them to me. Hey. Give them. had to do it so the city of gold would be yours alone. What? You know what I'm talking about, Mrs. Henderson. You've told your last lie. See, ma'am, these medallions will tell the whole story. Federal marshals are on the way to Sandoya right now. You... You must be... That's right. You told Brett Reagan all the law needs to put you in prison the rest of your life. The good spirit smiles upon us, Chief Tomachi. The cloud of evil has been lifted, Redbird. The masked man has brought justice to our land again, and my grandson has been returned to me. Although my bones and flesh are old, my heart is young once more. <laughs> Look there. Even boy child feel the happiness of this day. Do you think it's possible they will find the city of gold, Tomache? Could such a dream be true? Many of Tomache's dreams have come true this day, Redbird. Perhaps yet another will come to pass. We can only wait. Spanish words in the drawings indicate this to be the spot, Doctor. But a city of gold here? Yeah? It's only rock like the rest of these hills. Kimasami! Behind this rock, an opening!
Perhaps the city of gold is still only a legend. He must have it. Over there, another tunnel. underground cavern. I must have been here thousands of years. Like a dream. Those stalactites and stalagmites are pure gold. And it's on Indian land. All this would belong to our people. A mission hospital, Jane. All your dreams and hopes for the Indian. This will be the answer. Lake of Fire. Its mystery is now revealed. Aviva, they're gone. People have a new and shining hope, Aviva. A new life stands before us. None of this would be possible were it not for Tonto and the Lone Ranger. Will Silver, away! 